Airtable has a ton of passionate users, and chances are that if you're watching this video, at least one of them has tried to convince you to use it. But if you work at a large company, you might also be wondering if it's a good fit given the way you work and the many requirements your team or your company has for tools like this. This video explores the main reason why Airtable is often an ideal tool for large businesses. And that reason might surprise you because it's not about a specific feature or a workflow, although we will cover those later, but about the way you work within your company. And we're going to explore it by doing a case study of a business you probably deal with all the time, your local package delivery service. Have you noticed that FedEx packages sometimes arrive super late at night or not on the day that they said they would, but UPS packages are often pretty much like clockwork at the same hour of the day? How about how Amazon has pretty much no rhyme or reason of when it gets delivered, but it's always incredibly fast? Amazon's edge comes from the fact that its delivery service, like Airtable, has revolutionized the relationship between the needs of the people on the ground and their executive leaders. This video has three parts. First, we're gonna talk about package delivery. Then we're gonna get specific about how Airtable works for everyday users. And then we'll talk about how leadership uses it. At the end, we'll talk about the one major downside of Airtable. I'm Julian, and I run a consulting business that empowers you to get the most out of Airtable. So back to moving cardboard. Yes, it is true that these companies all do the same thing, but the way that they do it is wildly different. And I learned that for the first time when I was talking with a friend who picked up FedEx delivery shifts around the holidays to get extra work. He told me that FedEx hires subcontractors to make all of their local deliveries. Those subcontractors are given a route and a warehouse full of packages due for delivery and how they deliver them, what time, which houses first is completely up to that contractor. Because of this, you have a wide range of experiences with their services. Some contractors are phenomenal delivery partners and others have issues. It also explains why the delivery date often feels less predictable. It relies on the very different business cultures and communication styles of thousands of different contractors to send that delivery information back to the mothership. In software terms, FedEx is like Excel. We've all seen incredible systems built with Excel and we've seen terrible ones, but trying to connect one team spreadsheet data with another's is pretty much always hard. Now, UPS couldn't be more opposite. This is a company which has software to tell the driver exactly what driving route is the most efficient way to deliver today's packages. The planned route minimizes left turns because they waste time. This is a well-oiled machine and it generally works great, but when it doesn't work well, drivers have no power to change course. Sure, on average over the whole US, delivery time is probably reduced by avoiding left turns, but what if I've been driving the route for 30 years and I know better? Or what if the route does save a small amount of time every day, but it makes my life miserable? It turns out that many UPS drivers do have issues with the predetermined routes. Just check out the Reddit threads of frustrated drivers posting about the system. The software parallel to UPS would be something like monday.com for project management software, or Jira for product teams, or Salesforce for sales teams. It's designed to work a certain way extremely well, but it's not flexible and A players who want to build their own unique systems can't stretch their wings within the confines. Amazon, on the other hand, is a hybrid of both approaches. Amazon uses contractors when needed and runs their own trucks where it's more efficient. Nothing's perfect, but they're quite effective at delivering packages quickly and it's because they combine the top-down logistics with the freedom to adapt to local situations. The system is highly connected, but it's flexible. And this is Airtable. Using Airtable for the first time feels familiar like Excel. And I still think that Excel is the best comparison despite their many differences because Airtable doesn't have any built-in logic for how you should use it. It is whatever you want it to be. It's easy to jump right in and start a project like with a spreadsheet, but with obvious advantages like much better filtering, sorting, and grouping excellent cloud collaboration, and dead simple forms that allow you to collect data from anyone, regardless of whether they even know they're using Airtable. One feature is the ability to establish relationships between tables, for example, like delivery drivers to packages. This makes lookups, sum ifs, etc., so much more intuitive and easy, and it's a life-changing feature. You'll never think of a spreadsheet or a database the same way after you use it.
take this table of packages which has a field that links each one to its driver. To link a package to a driver, I just click the plus buttons and add it. In the driver table, I can see all of the packages linked to each driver. That's the flip side of the link in the other table that I just made. Since I have every driver's phone number here, I can create a lookup in the packages table that pulls in the driver's phone number using that link. Or I can go to the driver's table and create a count field which adds up the total number of packages linked to that driver. Add on top of that the ability to use automations and now interface layers to view your data in cleaner, more task-specific layouts, and it's no longer the people's spreadsheet, but now the people's tool for creating full software applications. So as you've seen, Airtable is a great Lego block-like tool for people building systems to get stuff done. But how does it help the leadership of the company? What are those top-down benefits? The basic idea is that these Lego block pieces come with fine-tuned user permissions so that certain pieces can be locked in place while others are still flexible. This allows leadership to protect official data that everyone can trust, such as the list of packages, delivery dates, and maybe a system for gathering those delivery statuses from the ground. It also allows them to roll that information up into dashboards to be able to make strategic decisions like which route is understaffed and needs more resources to keep up. These lockdown systems can still be synced into Airtable bases that individual teams create. So for example, maybe you have a team experimenting with a new trick to make routes faster, and they need the system-wide delivery data to compare against, but they want to combine it with their own research data. They can do that with Airtable. So I'm sure you can tell by now that I'm a huge fan of this platform. But Airtable does have one major cost that is shared by spreadsheets, but not by the off-the-shelf software like Monday.com, Jira, and Salesforce, and is that you have to build it from scratch. This includes the governance and the tension between the top-down and bottom-up approaches. Yes, Airtable does have many pre-built templates that will help guide you, but those will offer you multiple different ways to run a sales team or a marketing team. It's up to you to have to decide how they're going to work and negotiate that with your team and your partners. For this reason, I often recommend that you start using Airtable for something small and then see if you like it before tackling your big company-wide project. And most of the big enterprise companies using it across thousands of employees, it started with one team using it for a discrete task, and then the usage grew organically as people found more and more useful applications for it. So in conclusion, Airtable doesn't remove that tension between the top-down and bottom-up approaches. But the revolutionary thing that it does do is allow you to decide what the balance is between the two. It's impossible for a team to innovate by changing how their instance of Monday.com works. It just works how it works. Likewise, it's near impossible to roll up data from a bunch of teams who each have their unique spreadsheet system, or even two of those teams to simply work together across their systems. But Airtable databases can be set up to do that by creating certain hubs for information, that can be connected to your wacky innovative team solution. And because of that, effective software is often created faster and with more happy people using Airtable. If this explanation was useful and now you wanna jump in and start using Airtable, I recommend starting with this full-length beginner's tutorial. If you'd like more personalized guidance, I also offer services for Airtable training and implementations. You can find more information about those in the video description below. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next time.